Hello and welcome to the 18th episode of The Random Talks where we speak of everything and nothing at the same damn time. How you been? How your mama? How your cousin? How your baby daddy? Ooh, I don't want to know how your baby daddy is because girl, you might think that I'm trying to come for your baby daddy. No. <laughs> no. We're not doing that. That's very manure. That's not demure. That's manure. We don't like that. We're girls, girls. Speaking of girls, girls, let's talk about pussy because hold on, hold on. Hold on. I saw a clip from a podcast long ago and this guy was like, oh, I love bi women and their boyfriends. And I said, oh, I was at a loss of motherfucking words because I said gag. Gag. But let's talk about why. I took to Reddit and the question was, why do the majority of bisexual women date men? I'm very curious about this matter and it may come off as very assholey. That's not my intention, but if you're offended, please inform me on how slash why I could have phrased it better or if I should have asked it at all. I've been out as a lesbian for years. I'm currently, by advice of my therapist, unraveling and deconstructing my internalized homophobia. Ooh, this question arose from the deconstruction. Why is it that the majority of bisexual women I meet or see on TikTok slash social media date more men than women? I understand that they're attracted to men. It's really none of my business. This is just pure curiosity. The bisexual men I have met have been pretty 50-50 in their dating history. Obviously, there is a bias because these are just ones I've seen on social media or met in real life. I will be 100% honest and say that I think the difference in what I've seen between bisexual men slash women has caused some biphobia in me, unfortunately. I would have dated bisexual women, but this is something I've noticed, especially with them. Is it just more socially acceptable or is it easier to find straight slash bisexual men than women? Is it just me? And are the dating paths actually 50-50? Again, I'm being genuine with this question. If you are a bisexual woman who has dated more men than women, please comment as I would love your insight to help me learn. Someone responded with, I agree with other comments that there is a much larger percentage of men available to date. Social norms make cis men more frequent pursuers. So bi women are even more likely to be approached by men and maybe haven't unpacked their own discomfort with approaching women. And three, many bi women have already skewed the data before coming out. So even if they date more evenly after coming out, it might still skew towards men. I will add, as someone who used to identify as a bi woman, now as non-binary, I don't know how much this still happens, but it used to be quite common that lesbians would outright refuse to date bi women. Generally, I think it was biphobic reasons like more likely to cheat or feeling more threatened by the idea that if they broke up with a bi woman, they might date a man after. Another reply, cause you know, I gotta let people talk before I talk. Someone replied to this one and said, another weird part of compulsory heterosexuality is to assume that if a person is attracted to men, that their real orientation is only men attracted. So when men come out as bi, people will often say that they are really gay. When women come out as bi, people will say that they are really straight. I think this phenomenon does make it somewhat more likely that bi men will date men and bi women will date men because of how other people perceive their sexuality, including how potential partners perceive their sexuality. This also contributes to a lot of internalized biphobia and for bi women specifically, not feeling validated in their attraction to women. Oof. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I'm gonna have a, a, a reaction because they're they're kind of just, they're saying what I was gonna say. They literally said everything I was gonna say. Cause there are some women, they don't even know what they really want. And it's unfortunate because even some women they do know, but approaching a woman in itself is so intimidating that they shy away from it. Not saying that that justifies them restricting themselves and going to be with a man, but it's like, if you're a bi woman, you're not only attracted to women, just because you're not with a woman, it does not like, it's kind of like, you know in my other video where I was like, oh, um, what can I do to be more gay? After much thought and, and reflection, I don't need to do shit to validate that I'm gay. It's unfortunate that when people see me, they believe that I'm a straight passing woman. If that's how you feel, then that's how you feel, that's how you perceive me. But I will not lie. For me to sit here and say, oh my gosh, like, I'm not gay enough. I don't, I'm not perceived as gay enough. It kind of gave me like an internalized stereotype of what a woman that's not a straight woman should be. When it's like, I can be whoever I am and still like whoever I like, like I'm pan. 
I like everybody, but that don't mean that I need to be out here waving my motherfucking flag for people to know, like, bro, I'm not doing that. I'm walking into a space. If I'm attracted to you, I am. Let's go. It's lit. Let's, let's go. And I brought that up to kind of support the women that are dating men, but feel like their sexuality is being overlooked due to their partner. Like you can still be with a man and like pussy, bro. What's up? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Like, you can still be with a man and like poom poom. Are you the poom poom police? You gonna sit here and arrest me because I'm with a man? What if me and my man like poom poom? Like, what you gonna do? I just can't, I don't understand why people are so comfortable with monitoring people. And I understand this, this was just a question from someone. So I get it, you know, they were curious. And even me, I've seen most, like I've seen a lot of bi women be dating men, like bi women and their boyfriends, I get it. I would hate to say I don't get it because that would be a lie. It'd be a fable. It'd be a lie. So I'm not going to lie. I've seen a lot of bi women with men, but at the same time, I'm not going to take away their sexuality because they're with a man. That's like me being pan and I'm dating a cis man. Like, he know I'm gay. He know I like poom poom. We probably both eating coochie on Taco Tuesdays. So please, so please, brother. So please. Why y'all can't just mind your business? Hmm. 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 I understand that because it's something that's so repetitive, the curiosity does arise. And I get that. It even arose for me. I was like, ooh. Because before I thought I was bi. Found out that's not the case. I'm pan. For me personally, this is not everyone. That's another thing I'm gonna probably bring up later. I think I have like a little snippet from someone that commented on Reddit about this. But for me personally, I have never dated a woman. I've only dated men. But that's because I've only been in situations where I felt the need to date a man. I've only, I only have like two and a half exes. It's so funny. I said and a half because that nigga was a piece of shit. It was, if you could call it a relationship even. But like, I've only ever been in two and a half relationships. So for me to sit here and be like, oh yeah, I'm never going to date a woman. Like, I don't know. But I'm just going with the material, your honor. That's all I'm, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's not by choice. I do get the curiosity though, cause it's like, you say you like poom poom, but you're only getting dicked. That's like eating pasta without the pasta sauce. And I get it, I see why people, you know, think that. But that does not mean you can't eat the pasta and still, like, you can eat pasta and not have the pasta sauce on it and still like the pasta. It, it might not be the same. It's not gonna be the same. It's not the pasta with the pasta sauce. But it's, it's pasta, shit. Did y'all like that? Did y'all like that reference? The, not reference, the an, an, analogy, fuck. Anyway, and then someone commented, so many lesbians have been nasty to me about being bi. At this point, I only fuck with other bi's, including the bi men. Uh, I have something to say on that too, because it's like, bro. All right, so someone replied to said comment and said this, straight men are more welcoming of bi women than lesbian women are. But I think another factor not being mentioned is that for many bisexual women, it is easier to navigate through society's biases and hatred when with a man, which is a shame, but hetero presenting privilege is probably a factor even if not openly acknowledged. They just said hetero presenting privilege, which is probably a factor even if not openly acknowledged. It is, and I'm not gonna lie, me being like, oh, how can I be more gay? How can I be my gay? It's like, that was me saying, I don't want this. I don't. I want people to know. But at the same time, I don't need to be out here showing a card to me like, I'm not straight. This is my pan card. This, this means I'm not like, bro, I'm not. But I cannot deny that there is a privilege at being a hetero presenting woman. Whether I wanted to be that or not was up for debate. But now I'm gonna just be me, dog. I was, you know, the penguin. I keep every time I do this reference, I just forget it. Surfs up. He was like, this, 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 this is me, bro. Let me be me. Someone replied with, Yup, personally, I am of the opinion that hypervisibility and invisibility have their drawbacks. The amount of dudes who have instantly started pressuring me for threesomes after we started dating, plus extremely high rates of DV. But there's definitely a way for us to hide that not everyone has. Actually, hetero presenting privilege is commonly discussed with regard to bi people, both in ways that are biphobic and in ways that realistically acknowledge that we have the option to go back into the closet with a bit more ease. Ooh, spooky. I never thought about it like that. Whoa. 
I think the part that really got me and gagged me was the option to go back into the closet with a bit more ease. If you're not in a safe space and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't want these people to know I like poom poom. I keep saying poom poom. You know I want to say pussy, but I can't say that because the YouTube daddy wanted to spank me last time. I definitely get where it's easier to be able to be like, oh, I got my man. I got my boyfriend. I'm not into women. If you're in a situation where you need to present yourself not as yourself but as someone else, which would be a different situation as a, let's just say, a femme presenting gay man. Like, you can't just be like, oh, I'm straight. Like, I mean, of course you can, but femme presenting gay man, it's a lot different than being a hetero passing woman. So, ooh, girl, we started this off crazy. The last commenter states, I've had multiple friends that were bisexual. My best friend is bisexual and he is truly amazing, but the amount of shit people would say got on my nerves. You can't be bisexual. You can only like one gender. You're not bisexual. It's just a phase. You're either gay or straight. Unfortunately, I heard that from my mom when we were discussing sexualities. Of course, I would always stand up to people who said that, including my mom, period, as you should. Shh, sh Sometimes you gotta grab them by the lip and mush, you know? Shut your mouth. They need it. Anyway, about lesbians being biphobic. I am truly sorry, even if it's not me doing it. People can be extremely insecure about themselves, especially in relationships. A lesbian with a bisexual. I saw some women saying ill, but they like men. What if they leave me for a man? Hmm, I wonder why, Sherlock. People could feel insecure just because bisexuals including pansexuals, mm, like everyone, and they have more people to worry about. If you have to worry about your partner leaving you for another person, then that's you and your partner's problem, not their sexuality. Let me repeat that again. If you have to worry about your partner leaving you for another person, then that's you and your partner's problem, not their sexuality. Okay? Okay. It always seems like lesbians and bisexuals are always fighting with each other. Like, can we both be gay and happy? It's the bare minimum to respect someone's sexuality. And if the person is acting like a total asshole, don't blame them on their sexuality. Blame it on them. Oof. I don't know, commenter. I want to give you a nice, fat smooch on the cheek. That was delicious. Off topic, my arms are sweating so bad because of this native deodorant. Native, get your shit together because I should not be sweating this amount. Okay, ever since I started using your shit, I started sweating like a damn dog. I started sweating like a damn dog. Like they will put me in the oven and pop me out. Gosh, all that natural shit got me sweating, I'm leaking, I'm dripping. This was never happening before. Anyway, next. So this commenter really ate specifically because they even mentioned like, you know, pansexuals because in this conversation, even though it is mostly about bisexual individuals, pansexuality, you know, I feel as if this is a personal experience. Like I said, I thought I was bi. I was pan. But me being pan does not mean I'm going to be over here slinging. I was about to put my bit. I'll say it. I'm not going to be out here slinging dick or slinging poom poom at everybody especially if i'm in something with someone just for a quick example like i am seeing someone that i really do enjoy talking to and i ask them if you want to be exclusive i understand if you just want it to be between us but would you in the future or at some point be open to like a threesome would you be open to a four you know something that's you know yeah and they said no they, they're not comfortable with that and it would be a disservice to them. And I'm like, okay, cool. Cause there's boundaries that are set. Now, if that is something that I would truly want, like I can't live without it, then I would just have to talk with them and say, I don't think I can give you what you need right now because my needs wouldn't be satisfied in this relationship rather than going out and fucking cheating on them and being a piece of shit. You understand? Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference of being an actual adult and being a piece of shit? You can be an adult and communicate your needs, which you should be doing. You should be communicating your needs in addition to your partner's needs and being on the same page with your partner. Instead of just going out and, and getting, getting whatever you need, getting your fix and coming home. And it makes me feel a bit bad for those individuals that have been in situations like this where they're like, whoa, 
my partner thinks I'm going to fucking cheat on them because I my sexuality is open. Like, if I was with a bi man right now, I wouldn't feel insecure. Oh, he's going to go and cheat on me. Like, I, ha- I know you have... I have an understanding that, oh, you like, you know, you like men. So, of course... Even though as much as they're like, oh, when you have a partner and no one else is attractive, of course, but we, we're humans. We, we're visually stimulated at times. We're going to see someone that's fine, walk by, and then carry on. That does not mean that because their sexuality leans towards that person that they have to go out and, no, you can be loyal and be gay. Guys, you can be loyal and be gay. Did you know that? Did you know that? But that'll be it for this segment. Let me know what you thought. Because this is just something that I've, you know, it, it arose in my in my memory, mental brain booklet. And I was like, oh my gosh, T, let's talk about it with the girls. Also, when I say the girls, you don't have to be a girl to be a girl. It's just me saying, like, if I said the hoes, I would normally be like, oh, let me talk about this with these bitches. Y'all my bitches. Y'all not bitches. But y'all my bitches. You understand? So, boom. That's just something I thought about based off of the video or TikTok, whatever the fuck. It was a long time ago. Mind you, it was a long time ago. But that's just something that I thought about. Let me know. Is it tea? Am I going to get in trouble? Are people going to be mad at me? I'm just being myself. On to the segment, latest obsessions. And guys, I do have manga this week. It was a short manga. But I was like, ooh, girl, I haven't read manga in a while. And there's this thing where... The AC got to be all the way up. It got to be dark in the room. And I just get on my phone and I scroll. That's That was my childhood at some point. I couldn't go outside and do shit. So I used to just be under the cover in, in the house reading. And I recently did that again. It felt so euphoric, first of all. Felt amazing. Like, I was at peace with myself. But I'm going to butcher the fuck out of this manga name. Now, I'm not Japanese. And I don't speak Japanese. You ain't got to be Japanese, be Japanese. But I don't, I don't speak Japanese. Now, I'm, I'm pronounced this horribly. Just, just chill out, okay? I just, I was going to say be gentle. You don't have to. I like a little rough. But just chill. Just, like, relax, you know? Chirazoko no hiraet. 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 I'm sorry. Anyway, the fucking, the fucking description is, the MC Katsura will do anything to be loved. She's taken advantage of by a girl and sets her motives on unaliving herself. Before doing so, she meets a girl by the name of Kinka, who also wants to unalive. They both set their motives on unaliving, but the plot suddenly thickens. I said that because there was a twist, but I don't want to spoil the twist for you because I feel like that's the best part in, in, in chapter one. I think it's like only four episodes, so you're not getting too much, girl. Don't expect too much. But I was listening to... As the World Caves In by Matt Maltese. It just made it all more dramatic while I was reading. I, when I tell you, I never scrolled so fast. I needed to see what was, what was next. It was good. Those four chapters went by fast. I think you'll enjoy it if you like a little something that's maybe a bit on the darker side. I don't ever find myself gravitating towards a slice of life. Especially if it's manga. Like, I never like, oh, I need... No. Maybe the only one that I'll even watch. I don't know if it's considered a, a slice of life. It's like Spy X Family. That's is that a is that a is that a slice of life? I made this fake ass cocktail and it's it's not that bad. I put some mint in it to spice it up, but I didn't have anything to crush the mint, so I started poking it with my straw. Now I got little holes in it and it's making me itchy in the ear. Next for music, I have "I Want You Back" by Infinity Song, and the quote is "I want you back, but I will never tell you." I will never tell you that I want you back. And a million reasons not to cannot help to change the fact. The way they harmonize is so amazing. Just listen to the song. Next song is Still Have Room by Hockey Dad. And the quote is, take advantage while you can. You know I am a resilient man. Left me loaded in the dark. I still have room left in my heart for you. For you, I still have room left in my heart for you. I'm not sure if I'm missing someone. Like, I'm not sure if my body is missing someone, but my mind is literally in the future because I see my future with someone else. Like, I don't know if my body's like, no, go back. But I'm not allowing it because the music that I'm listening to, I had to think about it. I want you back. Still have room left in your heart. Like, what the fuck are you talking about right now? No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't have room left in my heart for you. That's a lie. Last song is Huh by Dochi. It's from her new album. Please go stream. Please go stream. Uh, 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 um, what is the name? Alligator Bites Never Heal. 
Never. Yep. Scar. What is the name? I forgot. Ooh, fake Dolce fan. I love Dolce. I love you. I love you, Dolce. Anyway, 5 a.m. Top Hill. Okay. New Rich and Millie on my wrist. Okay. Top floor made. Then she got paid. 500 bill for my mill. Okay. Hold on. Let me finish. Let me let me finish. New car don't need gas in. I'm so ahead of this fashion. I, I didn't even want to continue because I didn't want to do too much, so I left it at that. You go and listen to the song and you get well fed. I'ma just I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get this shit wet first. I'm gonna get this shit wet first. But I ain't go I ain't go, you know, I can't just drop it in you like that. So just go and listen to the motherfucking album. Next for shows, I have Worst X Ever. Ugh. This show kind of made me a little sad, so warning for anyone that this may trigger. They're gonna be talking about DV. Um, I'm pretty sure like all types of shit. This shit is just fucking horrible. I'm be honest. Like the show itself is great, but people are fucking insane, and it, and it sucks. Like this is horrible. It's a it's a horrible show. But the thing is, I think shows like this need to be made so there's more awareness because people think that oh that could never happen to me, and then it happens to them, and and these people they feel as if they cannot speak out because people think that it doesn't happen or. Or they think that it's normal. Or they think that it's okay. Like, it's it's not okay. The new true crime series, Worst Ex Ever, documents four instances of relationships gone extremely wrong due to violent, deceitful partners. So basically, these people get with a partner and it turns out their partner's a fucking monster. Like, imagine. I don't, I, I wouldn't recommend this show to anyone that it may even slightly, like, if you cannot take heavy conversations the way and they animate it it's a really good show but man is it fucking heavy like i even i watch like you know a little youtuber uh true crime shit all the time but for some reason this one hit a bit harder maybe because it was coming out of maybe it hit a bit harder because it was coming from the victims themselves or people in relations to the victims but it's just Man, like it's not for the lighthearted. I will give you that. It's if you think that you might get triggered, please be careful. You can skip over this recommendation and and I think I have another thing that's good. Oh well. It's it's a it's a show, but it's not true. So, we're good. The next show is The Frog. Of course, it's a Korean drama cuz like I need to at least start one a week. Like there's just no way. I'm just going to be out here raw dog in life without a Korean drama. Eh? The description is one tranquil summer, a mysterious woman checks into a vacation rental, triggering events that dispute the lives of the owner and those around him. It follows two men at the mercy of a ruthless killer, or killers, and an ace detective's pursuit of justice. It's good. I don't even want to give my little shitty uh, 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 um, descriptions that I normally do because it's good. You just hop, get into it, get into it. That's all I gotta say. I keep saying get into it. Trust me, get into it. You know, I won't recommend no shitty stuff. So, if it sounds like it's something that interests you, then watch it. But if you know it's not gonna be something that interests you based off of what I said, why the fuck would you go and watch so you can come back and talk shit to me? I'm, it's lit. I'll accept it. It's fine. <laughs> Somebody's gotta be the bad guy. Gosh, we got to this segment pretty fucking fast. Uh-uh, because why did we get to this segment so fast? I should have talked more shit. I should have talked more shit. I feel like I didn't talk enough because we had this segment real fast and I'm about to talk about my business. So if you've made it this far, I guess I'll talk about my business. I always talk about my business. I'll be like, I'm not talking about my business. And then I talk about it at the end because it's like the real bitches stay to the end. The fake bitches, y'all already clicked off about eight minutes. I've seen the analytics. I seen the analytics, okay? I know you're clicking off after eight minutes and that's okay, but you're not getting the good stuff. I leave the good stuff for the end. You're not getting the meat. You're getting the side of the patty. But except for, it, it, it's not even the good side of the patty that's good and crispy and, 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 and nice. It's dry. I recently, but not so recently, started seeing this guy. <laughs> He's honestly, I don't want to say that because I, have not fully seen him for who he is but he is honestly if i had to say everything i wanted in a partner it would probably be him not in terms of like the physical like physical it's face card swipes body card swipes body cards like great handsome guy but that aside like him his personality in itself is just so rich so delicious so precious that i'm like fuck because i'm low-key self-sabotaging and i've talked to 
about this with him. And he's like, ooh, the self-sabotage is going crazy right now. And I'm like, why? What are you talking about? Because it's literally going crazy. Like, fourth day, I was at his house and I started bawling. Because I'm like, bro, you know, you, you don't have to deal with all the shit that comes with me. Because I seen him and I seen his life. And I'm like, damn, you know, your life seems really peaceful. You seem like you're doing really well in life. Why should I come into your life and, like, fucking show you everything that I have in my closet? So, I have this little... this I, That sounds, like, all over the place, but let me explain. Um, when I was in therapy... I'm going back into therapy. I'm not in therapy at the moment, unfortunately, because a lot of things. But when I was in therapy, um, we... There was a term that I would use, and I'd call it my room. So, my head is my room and said room is a fucking mess it's this it's disgusting girl like it's roaches it's it's thank <laughs> i'm starting me to laugh at oh my gosh uh, why would i do that to myself but okay like it's nasty it's stank there's roaches it's like it's messy it's a mess but um i would make the reference of me working on my mental health is cleaning my room. So I mentioned this to him and I was like, like I have a lot of things to clean in this room and I just feel like it would be unfortunate for you to be here with me while I clean this room because it's a lot of shit that I have to work on. And he honestly said something that kind of shook me. I feel as if he sees me and it intimidates me because I'm like, you seeing me nigga? You seeing me? Because I had to build up a sense of, like, I had to build up a wall. You know what I'm saying? I had to build up a wall so no one sees me and notice that, you know, you know those memes where it's like, remember when you yell at me? This is what you're yelling at. And it's like this little fucking little deer, little fucking cute deer or like a fucking, gosh, I said I was going to stop cursing. I'm not. But it's like a little ass deer or a little ass alligator with a bow on its head. That's me. That's actually me. And it's unfortunate because I put on this persona of like, oh yeah, I'm big mama, blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and I'm, I'm the alligator. I'm the alligator with a fucking bow on it and it's pink. Look at me. Oh my God. Kind of a look. You guys like it? Anyway, but yeah. And he was like, why can't I be, why can't I clean up the room with you? And it shook me. I ain't going to say too much. That's all I'm going to say. But he was like, why can't I clean up the room with you? Or if you don't want me to clean, I'll keep you company in the room. But don't push me away because you have things to do unless you want to. He's like, if you want to stop talking. Oh, wow. Topping? Wow. Okay. He was like, if you want to stop talking, then we can. But, you know, I don't mind being here while you help yourself. And I've never had anyone see me in that way. That's all I'm going to say. There's a lot more. But that's all I'm going to say. And I say that only because I'm not sure if there are people out there like me that have had to build up a resilience wall due to, you know, traumatic instances that they've gone through or even current day things that they're going through to stay strong and to, to stay afloat. But it's like, when you're seen, you're seen, and it is going to be intimidating for you, but you have to be able to at least give a little peek. Like, even I'm giving a little peek, but I think to myself, I'm like, fuck, like, why did I do that? I shouldn't have said that. I should have just kept quiet. Should have been fucking nonchalant dreadhead, but I'm not nonchalant dreadhead. Even nonchalant dreadhead is not nonchalant dreadhead. So, like, be fucking for real. But I, I say that to say, I know there are bitches out there like me. Just... Of course, be careful of who you are vulnerable with because you want it to be someone that you can genuinely trust. It's, it's being vulnerable. That's a lot. But don't be afraid of it. You know, just don't be afraid of what can come because you never know. It could be something genuinely good. Not saying that, you know, I mean, I'm genuinely good with this guy. I don't know. I don't know. He's not even fucking here right now. I'm not going to give any details because I know you guys are fucking stalkers. You might find out who it is immediately. Immediately. Especially because you got a little, you got a little, you got some motion. You got some motion or whatever the hell. Don't go and look for my man. That's not my man. I, that's not my man. It's just someone that I'm considering. 
I cannot say too much. God, I hate when I talk too much. <laughs> he texted me. All right, I gotta go. I'm going out with my friend. That's so tea. Anyway, as you can see, I'm all dressed up because I'm going out tonight. So I'm going to wrap all this setup up. And I'm going to shake my ass and on a Wednesday night. Uh, uh, uh. I go to this place called Boogies. If you ever want to come and see me on a Wednesday, you might catch me. You might not. If you see me dancing crazy, though, don't come and say, hey, I love you. No, girl. Be like, hey, girl, what's up? Like, be cool about it. Don't be like, oh, my God, your YouTube, all oh, your podcast. Oh, we were, I remember you were talking about your nigga and how you're cleaning your room. Like, bro, don't. Don't don't blow up the fucking spot. Don't do too much. Just be like, hey girl, what's up? Like, I love your content. Oh, thanks. Don't say podcast. I'd be getting embarrassed when people are like, you got a podcast? Yeah. And then they come on here and they see me tweaking on camera. It's fucking wild. But if you like this episode, like this episode, take care, brush your hair, and wash that motherfucking dairy hair. Cause someone might be peeking in. Mm. Someone might be peeking in. You ain't got to cut the tree because you got to peek it in. Uh. Someone might be peeking. You got to clean your ass. Just clean your ass, okay? I don't know what that little rap thing that I did just now was, but clean your ass is what I'm trying to say. Clean it. Sometimes you got to stick a little finger in there to make sure you got all the shit out, you know? But ugh, that's, that was disgusting. But who's walking around here with a clean ass and who's not? I'll see y'all niggas later.